For the first time in over a decade, I bought a new telescope. I'm Michael Martin, and welcome to Late Night Astronomy. For the past year, I've been using the Skywatcher 300P to look at some incredible deep sky objects from my own backyard. And I thought it was finally time to share my experience with you all to help you figure out what your next telescope purchase might be. For me, it came down to three main factors, design, weight, and price. I've been saying it for years and I'll continue to say it. Dobsonian telescopes are the best bang for your buck in this hobby. After 10 years of using an eight inch Dobsonian, I wanted to stick with that design because of the simplicity of it. As impressive as go-to technology has become, for visual observing, I just prefer going out and simply setting up my telescope and manually star hopping to hunt down deep sky objects. After deciding to stick with the design of a Dobsonian telescope, the next decision I had to make was perhaps the most important. What size will the mirror be? The most common mirror sizes I kept coming back to in my price range for a mass-produced telescope were 10, 12, and 14-inch mirrors. A 10-inch mirror just didn't feel like enough of an upgrade to justify a new purchase. And a 14-inch telescope would have trouble fitting in my car and also would weigh so much that I was worried I just wouldn't take it out as much even in my backyard to use it. That led me to the 12-inch mirror, which was the perfect balance between an upgrade for my 8-inch telescope, not exactly in a price or weight range that deterred me from buying it or using it, but still one that I think I would see enough of a difference in objects, even from my backyard with light pollution, but especially from a dark sky location to justify a new purchase. So which 12-inch Dobsonian should I buy? The Skywatcher brand kept getting my attention because I wanted a truss tube design that would allow the telescope to collapse down and fit in the back of my hatchback to take it to darker skies about 30 minutes from where I live. That design, along with positive reviews and comments on the optics from books like the Backyard Astronomer's Guide and websites like cloudynights.com, led me to purchase the Skywatcher 300P. I ended up buying this telescope through High Point Scientific. They've been my go-to company to buy astronomy and astrophotography gear for the past several years, with incredible customer service and fast shipping. I'll be sure to leave a link to this and several other telescopes in the description of this video that you might be interested in. Please know that buying through these affiliate links can benefit this channel, and I really appreciate your support. So what are my thoughts on how this telescope performs and what it has to offer? Let's start with what impresses me. The quality of this 12-inch mirror for a mass-produced telescope is outstanding. I've been able to push this telescope on a cold, clear December night up to 500 times magnification, studying the surface of the moon and faint cloud details of Jupiter. But most nights I'm not pushing this telescope or any telescope to 500 times magnification. I do most of my observing between 50 and 150 times on deep sky objects from my backyard fighting against light pollution. But even under those conditions, I'm still able to see a dramatic difference in most objects from the 8-inch mirror to the new 12-inch mirror of the Skywatcher 300P. Housing the 12-inch mirror is a well-built truss tube design that really sold me on buying this particular telescope. Most importantly, when the truss tubes are fully extended, they lock down and hold collimation very well. I almost always find the secondary mirror right where it needs to be after setup and only have to make some minor adjustments to the primary mirror to complete collimation. The base holding this truss tube design is made of particle board. The altitude movement is fairly smooth with tension knobs that can be tightened to help accommodate heavier eyepieces and accessories. The azimuth movement runs on a roller bearing system and is very smooth, perhaps even too smooth. I've found sometimes when I go to switch eyepieces, merely removing the eyepiece from the telescope can cause a slight shift in the telescope moving. It does have a tension bolt, but that is not easy to tighten on a regular basis. The telescope comes with 10 and 25 millimeter plossal eyepieces, which will definitely get you started, but for an F5 telescope, you're going to want to upgrade these eyepieces for sure. I'll be making another video that covers the specific eyepieces I've bought for this telescope and how they've performed. So be sure to subscribe to this channel for that. So what could Skywatcher do to improve upon this telescope? 
First and foremost, it needs a dual speed focuser. And that's actually the first thing that I upgraded just a few months into owning this telescope. Skywatcher's 14 inch and larger Dobsonians come with a dual speed focuser, but a 12 inch F4.9 telescope in this price range should include a dual speed focuser as well. I ended up buying and installing the exact same dual speed focuser included with their larger telescopes, and it's been a much more enjoyable experience bringing objects into sharp focus in a smooth, slow way. There are a few other minor things that might just be personal preferences of mine, but they caught my attention as well. I replaced the 8x50 right angle finder scope with a 9x50 right angle correct image finder scope for my old telescope. And I also found the eyepiece holder to be tiny and didn't like that it was missing a true 2 inch eyepiece holder. Just like the finder scope, I simply installed the eyepiece holder for my old telescope to the new one. Accessories are a bit light from Skywatcher as well. I added a USB fan to help cool the mirror, and I created a light shroud using 5mm thick EVA foam along with Velcro that I bought from a craft store. Other additions like the Rigel Reflex Quick Finder were personal preferences of mine to make for quicker star hopping when I was hunting down deep sky objects. I'll be sure to include links to everything that I've added to this telescope in the description below. The Skywatcher 300P has been an incredible telescope that I've enjoyed using over the past year. But is it right for you? That's only something that you can answer, but I would encourage you to look at the three main things that I looked into when I was making this purchase for myself. Number one, is the design of it something that you can use and something that is simple enough to set up on a regular basis? Number two, is the weight of it something that you can put in a vehicle or easily take to your backyard? The last thing you want is a brand new telescope collecting dust like an antique in your home. And the third thing is the price. This is something different for everyone, but make sure it doesn't break the bank for you, particularly if you're just getting into this hobby and this is one of your first major purchases. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what telescopes you own and any questions you have about telescopes you might be looking to buy in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.